Earlier, you mentioned the euro dollar, or rather the dollar weakened. It undid quite a bit of its strengthening, recent strengthening versus the single currency. The euro area this morning, latest poll, again, from Bloomberg. Economists are forecasting that the ECB will cut rates once again towards June. The euro dollar, however, is actually quite strong. This morning it was around 138.60. What's holding it up? Goldman Sachs says 12 months out it'll be at 130, but it's quite strong. Yeah, I mean, you've got to look at, you know, the fact that the eurozone has become quite a stable area now. In the last Mm -hmm. year, 18 months, you've seen those peripheral bond yields absolutely plummet. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're still, uh, you know, providing attractive yields anyway. Mm -hmm. Greece has returned to the market. Ireland's come out of its bailout. Uh, Things are looking better. The lower inflation is actually assisting Mm. growth to Mm. some degree. Of course, Mm. there are serious concerns over unemployment in Spain in particular, but Italy's seeing uh, things improve a little bit, as uh, as is Spain, as is Mm. Greece, and they are becoming a little bit more competitive. Mm. Now, the ECB is playing a very, very careful game. The, The reason why the ECB can't just suddenly pull you know the trigger and mm-hmm. do whatever it wants as uh, Mario Draghi in his own words you know is because it doesn't want to stop the peripheral nations from making the reforms that are mm-hmm. required mm-hmm. if it if it acts as the lender of last resort you know um, unnecessarily when it's not really required then it's sort of like you know what do you do as a, a nation that needs to reform you think well it doesn't really matter we'll, we we won't do these reforms because the central bank will step in, or Germany will bail us out. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you have to be very, very careful and insist that, you know, we're not going to be the backstop uh, until things really do get very bad. And they've been perfectly clear in saying that def- not, it's not deflation, it's disinflation, it's right. low inflation. Mm-hmm. Low inflation is going to be here to stay. If low inflation remains for longer than we expect, then we'll look at quantitative easing. Mm-hmm. What quantitative easing? We don't know yet. So, we'll, you know, they will do something if and when it's required. Mm-hmm. Uh, a cut in interest rates in June, I'd almost go as far as to say that I don't think they will cut interest rates actually mm-hmm. any further because, um, you know, take the euro to one side, I just think that, 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 that things are stabilising in the eurozone. Okay. So I'm not sure that necessarily a cut in interest rates is warranted yet. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Going back, talking about the periphery, but to put into context, um, we're coming out of a very, very harsh financial crisis. There is a recovery. But for example, in the case of the UK, the central bank, the Bank of England, needs to be extremely careful, methodical, very, very nuanced in everything that it does as far as guiding forward guidance, guiding interest rates, guiding market participants because of the knock-on effect it can have on the UK consumer through channels like mortgages, etc. But for example, in Spain, the Eurozone periphery, indeed the ECB has to be careful not to let people see it constantly as a backstop, call it perhaps the ECB call, that central bank will always bail us out. But in some periphery countries, you have, look, for example, Spain, you have the core rate of inflation, not the headline, which is very close to the threshold. The last number for February was not 0.1% year on year. So it's about to go negative. If that only reflects food and energy inflation going down and filtering into the economy to a large extent, that might not be, strangely enough, a completely bad thing. However, negative core rates of inflation for a heavily indebted country for banks who don't want to see non-performing loans rise, how dangerous can that get? Well, deflation is a very dangerous condition and no one wants to see deflation at all Mm. because especially in a a country like Spain that has very, very high levels of unemployment. So even those people that are lucky enough to have be in work, you know, that, that deflation will put huge pressure on their wages and they'll see their wages go down. Um, but small sort of low inflation or small disinflation, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. uh, isn't such a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're seeing food prices uh, decline but wages remain stable, mm-hmm. then that will help the consumer. That will also help business. And you should see a little pickup in employment as a result. Okay. But obviously, you know, outright deflation is a very, very bad thing. No, no one wants that. Mm-hmm. 
So it seems, if I understand you correctly, there are actually perhaps some positive, as long as it's a very small decline in inflation for certain reasons, some positive redistribution effects? Yeah, absolutely. You've only got to look, that, look at that in, in the UK where everyone's breathing a massive sigh of relief that inflation is below uh, target. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've been suffering from inflation around 5% for quite a long time. Wages have not kept up. For the first time mm -hmm. in a long time, people are talking about wages picking up faster than inflation. Indeed. So that is a good thing.